Hi folks, this is Tom here with FrugalPreppers.com. Uh, today, uh, I'm going to switch over to a little bit of ham radio stuff here. Um, of course, uh, as part of being prepared, I think that at least getting a, a technician class, amateur radio license, um, is important. And it's a relatively easy test to pass. Um, you can read the book and do practice questions. Um, and I got my ham radio license about 12 years ago, um, and um, I enjoy it as a hobby now and then. Um, but I also keep a ham radio in the uh, bug out bag. Uh, when a lot of the other communications fail, um, ham radio is going to be the way to go. Um, even if you're just a technician and you just have a small like, VHF, UHF radio, which means you can talk on like local uh, repeaters and stuff like that, not necessarily talk all the way across the country. Um, if you, you on a uh, technician license, you can now talk on a 10 meter band, which is what we call HF, which gets you a little bit of distance, especially when the sunspots are right. Um, and then you can use Morse code on some of the other bands, but you'll have to get a general uh, class license or above to be able to actually talk on the bands that get you real far distances. But what I'm covering today is just a little uh, J-Pole antenna. This is a dual band J-Pole. Um, I got this off of eBay and down below I will put um, a link um, to the seller. Um, but it, this is built by uh, Ed Fong. Uh, his call sign is WV6 uh, IQN. Um, and um, he builds a real good antenna. It comes in a little plastic bag like this. Um, as a little like kit that you're going to install it into your own piece of PVC pipe. comes with an instruction sheet. You have the antenna itself. And you have a PVC cap. And you have another PVC cap with an XO239 connector in the end of it. And then a wire that unfolds that's soldered together and it's trimmed in, in specific spots, you know, like right there, so that it's tuned exactly to the white frequencies. Now he sells this in a GMRS band antenna, and um, he also sells this in the amateur radio band. Um, and what you do is you just get you a piece of PVC pipe. Now, this looks and is the same outer diameter as what's called a Schedule 40 PVC pipe but you don't want to use Schedule 40 PVC pipe. And it tells you this in the instructions that the Schedule 40 is too big, uh, too thick walled. So the antenna won't radiate proper with that. So you want to use um, a PSI 200 pipe. And um, they give you a Lowe's part number and Home Depot part number and stuff in the instructions, the, uh, some different stores. But it says 200 PSI on it. And um, this is much thinner and it's actually a little more flexible than, than Schedule 40 is. So building this antenna is actually very simple. You simply take your uh, antenna and just as a review on this antenna, I have to say that everything's cut very precisely. Everything is soldered very well. It's very well put together. Uh, you can tell that he really takes his time and tunes this and does things exactly. He's got a nice little piece of heat shrink over the joint here. Um, these wires are soldered together very well. It's just a, a very, very well made antenna. And um, I had one of these um, before for about 15 years. Um, I even threw it up on my repeater temporarily for a few months when my big antenna had to come down. Um, and it worked just fine. <laughs> um, he makes this in like a 250 watt version and I believe this is a 60 or a 50 watt version here. Um, which you have to use um, heavier gauge cable and, and the measurements may be a little different on the higher watt version too because I imagine it changes what's something called the velocity factor when you use the bigger cable. Um, but this is just going to go on the side of my house and hook into my portable radio um, so that I can uh, work some local repeaters and stuff like that with it. But basically you just take this Take the uh, empty end cap, you'll put it over one end, like so. Now he tells you in the instructions not to glue these. However, 
this is going to go up high tower and I don't want it to fall apart. So it would make it impossible to service in the future, but I'm going to put a little bit of PVC glue on mine if I can get it open here. Well, I'll put that on later, but um, basically if you don't use glue, you can take it apart later and service it. And it does go together pretty tight. I mean, it fits on there real well. So you put the end cap on one end, you flip this around, and now you just basically kind of feed the, you know, I straightened the wire out, I feed that part of the antenna in, feed this in, and just kind of, you know, straighten it as you can as you go a little. And uh, basically, you don't have to do it too much. That pipe kind of helps hold it straight. Now, you notice when you get down here at the end of the antenna, you have this little piece of RG174 that goes down to the connector. This is like 10 inches. So what this means is that the, that's a 10-inch feed line. So now this all goes together. Just put that on there nice and tight. And now you have 10 inches at the bottom of this antenna where you can put clamps on it. Um, I'm going to use conduit clamps. Some of the people use like the little U clamps. If you're putting it to a piece of mask, you could probably even use hose clamps. And you just run your, your uh, cable out to here and hook on a PL259 connector onto this SO239, which is the female version of that connector. Screw them together. Um, like I said, he makes them in higher wattages for an extra cost, and he also makes them with an end connector for an extra cost, which would have less loss than the SO239 um, if you're using like a low loss cable or you have a long cable run, especially on, on UHF, you're going to have more loss in the cable than on VHF. And all in all, it seems like a well-made antenna. He sells these for like $25. Um, I just think it's a heck of a deal. It's a way to uh, get you an antenna. You don't have to do a whole bunch of measuring and tuning. He does all that for you. And you can put in your own piece of PVC. Uh, this PVC pipe came like in a big long 8 or 10 foot section for $1.80. So no big cost there. It's cheaper to buy your own than for him to build it and have to shove this big long antenna in the mail. So. Um, I would give this little antenna, um, I've already uh, played around with it and used it a little bit, and um, just great signal, um, seems to have decent gain, um, just a real good performing antenna, like I said, I had one of these before, um, uh, storm hit the house and destroyed it, broke it into kind of tiny little pieces, um, but it's just always been a great performing, I love the dual band J pole, that's just a good general purpose all around antenna. Um, it wouldn't even be a bad idea to have one of these build it and put it away so that if all your other antennas get destroyed in a storm or whatever, you've got a decent antenna you can throw up for emergency use that you haven't spent a lot of money on. Then good strong PVC pipe, very durable, um, easy to transport. Um, all in all, I just have to say, you know, I give this little antenna just a five out of five for what it is, which is a cheap, very effective, um, dual band UHF VHF antenna. Thanks, I'm Tom with FrugalPreppers.com. I always appreciate any feedback, comments, suggestions, and uh, please be sure to like and subscribe.